Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. This show focuses on humankind's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality. Today is October 9th, 2015, and Phew, I believe that Mercury went direct today and hopefully the massive confusion and most of the chaos of the last week is now behind us. Before I welcome my guests this evening, I would like to take a moment to thank Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling of N5D Radio who support and sponsor this show. Thank you, you lovely people. You can't know how sponsoring this show has already changed so many lives. This program is based upon the foundation of the work of the late, great Dolores Cannon, who was my teacher, my mentor, and my friend. It was my honor to be trained by her and work closely with her for several years before her death. I'm the creator and the manager of her original support forum community, for practitioners that will soon be moving into its eighth year. My guests today are two lovely ladies and colleagues, powerhouse practitioners of QHHT, which is quantum healing hypnosis, which is what Dolores' method is now called. We have Barbara Becker, who's a quantum healing hypnosis technique level two practitioner, and she's based in Arizona. After a near-fatal accident in 1986 and a meet-your-guardian-angel meditation 10 years later, Barbara discovered that she's a healer. She became a Reiki master in the Yusui tradition. Hey, guess what, Barbara? Me too. And she's an angel communicator. After years of metaphysical studies, meditations, workshops, and her personal healings, she received a shamanic opening ceremony in spring of 2003. And on the night of that ceremony, she began speaking a healing mathematical star language not found on earth. We have to ask her about that one. She began channeling healing for groups of people with the language and by moving her arms and hands in the air and speaking and taking to a person in her past life, healing them instantly and bringing them back into the present moment. This was all done unconsciously. Barbara has an interesting background. She's a retired critical care and emergency room nurse. She holds an associate degree in nursing and a bachelor's of science degree in business. And Barbara's world travel over 24 years has taken her to places in Asia, Europe, South America, Australia, New Zealand, and she's been opening Stargate tonight. I know she's also traveled to Arkansas because, uh, because I met her there this past summer. <laughs> Barbara wrote and published her book, Enclosure, a spiritual autobiography in 2012. And in it, she shares her journey of being a skeptic. Really, Barbara, you were a skeptic? And who she is today with stories of miraculous healings, including reversal of death. Boy, there's another one I want to ask you about, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara writes and publishes a monthly blog and newsletter, lots of articles. She trance channels her higher self known as the White One, a collective of beings who come from the great central sun creator source. She offers this service to the public through her monthly star energy 
telephonic conferences where participants receive healing and answers to their personal questions. And that's just one of our guests tonight. That's Barbara Becker. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say hi to Barbara. Hold on. Let's see. Working on the tech issues here. Hi, Barbara. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you are. I know. Yes, yeah, she is. I'm <laughs> sorry. My assistant is helping me and making sure our second guest is on, and she is, but I'm going to introduce her after just saying a very brief hello to Barbara. I'm glad you're on, Barbara. You know, Mercury was supposed to be done, but I don't know if it is or not. <laughs> We're having well, some we're issues making, here. Yeah, we're making the most of it, and we're just sliding in till the end tomorrow, so that's good. That's okay. <laughs> Is it really tomorrow? I actually thought the end was like today, so I got that wrong. Oh, that, yeah, well, then it, it, it's supposed to stop today, but then we have like a little, like a, a transitioning of it diminishing over the next, what, All right. you know, week. That's what the astrologers tell us, so. Okay. Well, let me, uh, before we continue talking, let me introduce our second guest, and that is Holly Duckworth. Holly is also an amazing quantum healing hypnosis practitioner, and she practices with Aware Care in Durango, Colorado. She has a Ph.D. in psychology. Wow, Holly, a Ph.D. And she is a retired psychotherapist in the state of Colorado. Holly was trained by Dolores Cannon, as well, and has a level two certificate. So Holly came to QHHT through a tragic situation with her son. He was briefly incarcerated for a DUI, and during this incarceration, he started reading Convoluted Universe 4 and told Holly about the book and Dolores. And in order to connect with her son, Holly bought the book and read it too. She immediately became a devoted follower traveled with her son to see Dolores at a seminar and then quickly became a practitioner, and she's now been practicing QHHT for almost three years. Holly's background is in the technical, industrial, corporate world, about as far away from QHHT as you can get. She, is, um, she has a BS in mechanical engineering and an MS in management, and it, in addition to her Ph.D., so she's a studious gal. She's an industrial expert in process improvement, maintenance, reliability, sustainability, training, and development. And she um, calls herself left-brained. She's published two adult books on the subject of sustainability and social responsibility. And she's in the process of writing seven children's books on subjects about social responsibility and Holly and her husband live in Durango and stay very busy fixing up their log cabin and working on their small farm well we have something in common there Holly I live on a farm too welcome Holly thank you Candace I'm glad to be here <laughs> yeah the, the I'm, I've got the the sheets of plastic over the garden now trying to protect my lettuce until the last possible minute <laughs> Bless your heart. I, you know, I've, I've got some places to do all that, and I keep looking at it going, I'm going to do it. I'm going to plant. I'm going to. And then I just get so busy I haven't done it. Well, I want to welcome both of you to um, to this show, and I, I want to tell you that I'm so excited to see you um, on the airwaves here with me again after um, you know being able to spend a little bit of time with you over the the summer. I, I'm so thrilled to have you here because truly uh, the two of you are active, amazing QHHT practitioners. And, and today we're going to talk about all kinds of things and stories and, and different sessions you've had and, and some amazing information that really aligns with so much of what we've learned from our teacher, Dolores Cannon. So uh, it, it's been a, a hectic, crazy week, and um, I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward to tonight. So welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, why don't we start with you, Barbara? Why don't you tell us how, how you learned about QHHT? How did you find out about it? How did you come to this work? Okay, sure. Well, I went camping by myself in the woods of northern Arizona in 2013 in the summer 
and specifically to meet a group of Arcturians because I heard that you can meet Arcturians um, in in this area uh, as well as other be- star beings. And when I went to sleep that night and woke up the next morning and I felt, okay, I didn't uh, remember anything. Um, I know they you can meet them when you are in your dreams. And I went home the next day and I was talking with a friend of mine who um, had uh, encounters with um, uh, beings her whole life and she had a regression done by Dolores. This is the first uh-huh. I heard of Dolores Cannon. And she suggested, why don't you go to Dolores Cannon's website and find a practitioner in your area? So I said, okay. So I I found uh, Holly's name and phone number, wrote it down, and said, okay, when I get back in town from the ranch, I'll you know, contact her. And I went into the living room here, the ranch, and did a meditation. And my third eye opened up, and I saw the whole scene um, like a movie, much like what happens in a past life regression. And there I saw, I went on board the ship and received uh, an implant, and I uh, asked them, you know, what is this for? And they said, it's to upgrade my light coat. And when I woke up the next day, I did have a raised red area on my skin of my left outer thigh. And that stayed there uh, for about two weeks, and then it went away. I do have a photo of it. Well, I got back to to the Phoenix area, and I contacted Holly. I had not read any of Dolores' books or seen any of her videos, and I called her and said, well, um, you know, what is this? And um, Holly, do you want to take part of the story from here? Sure, Holly. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, right. she's there. Yeah, so, so, I'm, so I'm practicing in Phoenix. My, my husband and I have been here during it for a couple of years. And uh, Barbara is, is one of the many clients um, that I was seeing at the time. Um, in my quote spare time at that at that time in Phoenix, and uh, so she came in for a session, had a fantastic mm-hmm. session. It was textbook, beautiful. Higher self came in beautifully, had a wonderful, wonderful experience. And uh, it was funny though because when she first came into my at the time I was practicing in my home, and she comes into my home, and you know we're Candice, we're doing the interview as we do in QHHT, very mm-hmm. thorough interview process and I'm getting to know um, Barbara and I'm sitting there thinking to myself why is she here you know she's this incredible (laughs) star healer and so aware and so connected I'm like what on earth is she going to get out of a QHHT session she doesn't need this she's already plugged in (laughs) and so I'm feeling, I'm feeling, you know, quite humble in her presence at this moment. I'm going, okay, uh-huh. if she really wants it, I'll go through <laughs> the steps, but I don't think she needs it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Barbara, you want to you want to take it back from there? Okay. Well, I <laughs> specifically had asked for my my thyroid to be healed. I had hypothyroidism, and I was taking a naturopathic preparation, and I I don't want to take anything. And during that session, uh, Holly said that when they did the scan on me, my body turned into a waveform. You remember that, Holly? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. So um, um, and after that can, session, can I, my, my thyroid Can I interrupt? Healed. Can I interrupt mm-hmm, and sure. ask a question there? Because that you know, these are the kinds of things that I know that our listeners are <laughs> are very interested in. So, okay. <laughs> Your body turned into a waveform. So what I want to know is mm-hmm. this. Did it actually physically turn into a waveform as you're watching it? Or is this like an in your mind's eye kind of thing happening? I mean, which mm-hmm. is it, mm-hmm. if you can even say mm-hmm. if there's a difference between the two things? I know that our listeners are interested in that. Sure. So let me, let me set the stage a little bit here. That um, So she's lying in a bed. Um, 
in a, on a queen size bed, and uh, I think Barb, I think you had your knees propped up with pillows and and the pillow under your head, and and uh, she's kind of uh, uh, kind of you know very well nested, if you will, in the bed, um, and uh, and we're 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 uh, you know at this point where we're doing the physical healing, we're well into the session. So um, we've gone through a lot of of, uh, investigation and and looked at past lives and had some conversation with a higher self. So we're way into the session now. And for those of us that that are the facilitators in a session, this is pretty tough work because your attention is totally devoted. I mean, you are on spot with your attention span during the entire session because you don't know what's going to happen next, right? <laughs> and, Isn't that and, the truth? Yeah, so by this time in the session, you're a little mentally exhausted, right? But you're you're still on point with the um with the um uh with the attention span. And for Barbara at this point during the healing part, her body physically with my eyes wide open i'm watching her nested in this bed and her body is vibrating i it, it's 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 um i i don't even know the words to describe it it's undulating her body is undulating that's the right word her body's undulating and then of course in my mind's eye i can see the energy uh with my third eye i can see the uh the energy um waves that are going through her body yeah so that wow. experiences like that that can kind of tends to wake you up right and <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> pay even more attention <laughs> and Candace, when i do when i do sessions with clients it's not unusual for me to see with my physical eyes the client's body turns into white light and I've even had times when the whole room is a brilliant white light during the healing part. Yes. Uh, it, it sometimes does work like normal. that. And, I, I, you know, I have to tell you, ladies, I just had the undulating thing. And when the when the fellow sat up, I mean, this happened just a few days ago. And when he sat up, he looked at me and he said, you know, he said, I felt that. I didn't know my body could do that. <laughs> It was the same sort of thing. It's like, um, what is it? It's like that dance move, you know, where the people put their arms mm-hmm. out and they make it look like they're doing the wave. That mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. throughout the entire body. Mm-hmm. And sometimes yeah. more um, visibly and more physically than others. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a little mm-hmm. more subtle. But that doesn't always, um, we should say, shouldn't we, ladies, that if that doesn't always indicate healing or not healing, but it is one of the more visible right. signs that some that sometimes happen. So did that right. heal your thyroid issue, Barbara? Yes, I don't take anything at all. So that's gone. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's really that's really great. So so you had the session and then what happened? Well Holly called me a couple of days later and said, "Could I do another session with you by uh, yourself again?" <laughs> and I said, "Sure." So we did another session. Um, it was kind of cool because we we got to use the uh, keyword, and then I went right into the um, I believe it was parallel lives, and mm-hmm. um, so that was very very fascinating. That's amazing. Uh, so you two have been friends ever since then. We have. Well, we really have. This, yeah. Um, so would you like to know how I got into QHHT, or did you want to? Sure, to absolutely. So okay. so you had a session, and then, then what happened? So I had two sessions with her, and that was in 2013. Mm-hmm. And then about a year later, last year at this time, uh, Holly uh, called me, and Holly, do you want to tell your part of this? And I'll come. We'll come back to uh, my part. Right. So I had had some 
some insight. You know, one of the things that, that begins to happen is you start to practice QHHT. And and even if you frankly, even not even not necessarily even practicing, but once you've had a few sessions yourself and as practitioners mm-hmm. we we want to have sessions, you know, where we're mm-hmm. where we're the person that's going into trance. And so I had get I have over the years since um, practicing QHHC, really gotten a, a very strong connection to my higher self. And so I've become much, much more prescient about, you know, things that are going to happen, um, things that need to happen, and just, you know, making sure that I'm walking the path in my life. And I mm-hmm. got a really big knock on my metaphysical door from my higher self that said, Call Barbara. Make <laughs> sure that she becomes a practitioner. <laughs> this is her. And at the time, Barbara, I don't think Barbara, you had any intention whatsoever of being a QHHT practitioner. She had all of her angel work going on and all of her other mm-hmm. healing modalities going on. She didn't need QHHT added to her mm-hmm. her list of modalities. So I call her, and I. Barb, I don't think we had seen each other for maybe a year. I mean, we've talked we had talked on the phone and and uh casually, you know, chit chatted here and there, but um I call her up and basically say, Hey Barb, you know, you need to be a QHHT practitioner. How do we make this happen? So, um so she did. She she went and took the took the training and uh and well, uh, can I, I can I tell, share what mm-hmm. happened to get sure. that decision. Mm-hmm. I um uh I got the protocol for doing a QHHT session on myself. So I told her I'm about ready to do one and I'm going to ask that question. Is this something that's in alignment with my soul? So I uh put myself down into that theta level and I was taken off the planet just like you do with Google Earth and I was put into Pompeii and Ercolano, what we know as Herculaneum, Italy. And I saw that she and I were both men, and we had a very successful metal pipe business. We made and installed the lead pipe system, the underground system, in those two towns. Uh, and so I I asked uh, is, uh, my higher self, is, is this an alignment to do this? And... Uh, I was told yes, so I brought myself out, and I uh, text messaged Holly and said, "Okay." Um, I, I, Holly was thinking that because of the the work I do unconsciously, um, apparently I have the ability to take a person into a past life, heal them, and bring them back, and it's all done unconsciously. And she brought a very good point out was that, you know, people are not even aware of that. But with QHHT, you're actually experiencing it live and it's the session is recorded so that you can receive more healing, more information, the, the expanded consciousness and a closer connection with your higher self. It mm-hmm. um, really makes it more real for the client. Even though my clients do have um, healings occurring, um, this this really um, I saw it as a as a really good fit, and so I took the course and um, took the exam and then uh, began doing sessions. Wow, and she Barbara, went, that, um so wonderful. Candace, it's just go ahead. Candace, Barbara came out of the the shoot. I mean, full speed ahead. I think, <laughs> Barbara, how many clients did you have in, within the first three months? I mean, people were flocking to her. Yeah, I got I got booked up from December to June within two weeks. Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. So I have a question for you, um, Barbara. You know, you've been doing this other sort of. Um, you called it unconscious healing with past lives. So as these Mm -hmm. stories became sort of verbal and more accessible, um, you know, to our conscious mind, to your conscious mind, to your um, 
client's conscious mind. How did that change things for you? What did you learn about that? Oh, boy, I've learned that it's wonderful to have it tangible for the client. Uh, because some people have not progressed long enough to be in that awareness, to be uh, trusting and having that inner uh, knowing. And this really helps them along their path to to open up, to um, come into their, their enlightenment. This is where this mm-hmm. is all going. Uh, sure. When I, took, when I took the course, I just sat there and I said, my God, this is sacred work. And it, it is an honor. Mm-hmm. It's an honor. And that, and I think, sessions. yeah, Barbara, if I can just um, just add to that too. You know, I mean, that, I, I haven't found another metaphysical healing modality that, um, you know, many other modalities work and work well. But when the client walks away from a QHHT session, they have a audio recording of unbelievable words of wisdom for them coming from them. So the, mm-hmm. the advice, the wisdom, the direction isn't coming from the facilitator. It isn't coming from the practitioner. It's coming from themselves. Mm-hmm. And how do you deny what came out of your own mouth, right? Yeah. That's a really good that's a really good point, Holly. Holly, how did you get involved with QHHT? How did you discover Dolores' work and how did you come to be a practitioner? Yeah, well like like you said in the in that intro, so um my son was incarcerated. He's a young young man at the time. I think he was nineteen or twenty. And um um, he was in a situation where uh, we couldn't even visit him. It, the only connectivity I could have with him was either with a video conference or with a phone call. So uh, as any mother knows, I mean, I was just ripped to shreds at this moment, you know, mentally and and uh, would do pretty much anything to make any sort of connection with him. And he miraculously somehow found Convoluted Universe 4 in jail and started reading it. And so I was on the phone with him. He says, Mom, you got to read this book. And so I immediately, you know, Amazon, one click, did it, you know, tomorrow I want the book um, so that the next time he calls we can have something to chat about. And I start reading Convoluted 4, and I'm I'm sitting there reading it and and nine times out of ten, weeping while I'm reading it <laughs> and and going, everything I've ever believed in my entire life is in this book, and I've never read any other book that aligned so well with my beliefs. And uh, so I was as smitten with the book as he was. So he, he, was in, he was in jail for about 20 days, and so he gets out and... Uh, Immediately after that, we found the the Dolores uh, Dolores and Julia and um, uh, Dee Wallace were actually doing a seminar in Sacramento, and we said, we're going, you know, let's go. Um, And uh, I had, of course, Dolores did her group Past Life Regression, and she did the group uh, Meet Your Spirit Guide, and she did the group Mm -hmm. Future Life Progression scripts. And I I personally had just amazing experiences with all three and um, with the path life. And at this point, Candace, I mean, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm in the industrial <laughs> world. I'm not, you know, I'm not etherical. I'm not metaphysical. I'm not any of this. Right? And I had my own personal first path life experience. It was so shocking and so not what I expected and so real and I'm sitting there in the seminar and going, oh, oh, my gosh, this is real. This is real. This is really real. <laughs> Holly, can I, can I interrupt you and have you clarify? Sure. So 
also, um, maybe our listeners aren't aware of this, but um, I, I believe what you're saying is that Dolores is giving a, a you know, a lecture or whatever, and she's kind of sitting up in the front of usually a ballroom or, or something, and mm-hmm. and she's just speaking to a group, and the entire group is led into uh, one of these experiences. And, and is this where That's you're exactly saying right. that you... And 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 yes. can you share? Can you tell us about? Can you tell I us about the past? I can. I I <laughs> can. And so, so there's about seventy people in this room, and um, and you know, D- Dolores was just, she has such a presence. She she was so humble, um, but yet so confident and so straightforward. You know, because she had only done what she had done for forty five years. So. Um, <laughs> She wasn't, you know, she wasn't the least bit, you know, uh, uh, lacking in confidence in it. But yet, she was, she was a very, very humble person. And, um, and of course, yes, yeah, she had done some lecturing, and then she, she begins to lead all 70 people simultaneously through a script that, you know, we're all in a, we're just sitting in chairs uh, in, the, in the ballroom, just like you're saying, and mm-hmm. um, and we're relaxing, and they turn the lights down just a little bit, and she goes through some general relaxation, and then she starts the, the script for getting you to a past life experience. And mm-hmm. so in this case, in this case, she had us go down into a tunnel, and we're opening up different doors. And I open up a door, and it's like a split screen, and on the left, is just stars and the universe, um, you know, a, a lot of just black void space, but with these beautiful stars shining. And on the right, I can see my feet. <laughs> so I said, huh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to look at these feet, right? And um, and as in, as in a lot of past life regression situations, we start out with assessing our physical condition in how we arrived mm-hmm. at this past life. And so I'm looking at my feet and I'm looking at my hands and I'm looking at what I'm wearing. And what I am is I'm a, um, at this point, I'm a middle-aged African-American lady living in, I think it was either St. Louis or Chicago, but some urban center in a very, very small little, um, you know, almost like a shack of a house. Um, I was married, I had three children, and um, I remember looking at my hands and my feet. Now, I'm, I'm, Cauc- I'm Caucasian, um, and I remember looking at my hands and my feet and seeing that I was African American, and I'm looking and I'm going, huh, I never expected that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect to be a different race. I don't know why I didn't expect to be, but I didn't. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm looking at my hands and my feet and go, wow, that's really amazing. It's not, that's not me, that's someone else. And so I had this, it was, a, it was what Dolores would call a digging potatoes life. You know, my important scenes were cooking bacon at the, at the stove and hanging laundry mm-hmm. and um, just regular uh, chores going on in that lifetime. Very, very mm-hmm. uh, poor, humble situation. Uh, back in like the turn of the century, um, you know, 19 teens, 1920s, and uh, went all the way through the death scene, saw myself in the casket, and uh, as an old lady, and uh, and I I I went through the whole experience right there in the hotel ballroom. <laughs> Isn't that just amazing? And mm-hmm. and in, in not very long of a time either. I mean, that's you know, it's a pretty short little little session in comparatively speaking yeah all of this is like less than 20 minutes yeah yeah Yeah. well and and i'd like to mention for our listeners that many of our qhht practitioners um you know around the country and around the world facilitate these group regressions and it kind of gives you know the public or people in meetup groups or whatever you know a taste of what of what can possibly um, happen in a one-on-one session, and sometimes, and I have to tell you this, I, I had a group regression here many, well, several years ago uh, of a gal, and she just, um, she had some sort of ET 
experience during the group regression, and she said it absolutely changed her. And, I mean, I still don't even really know the details of it. It just, you know, it was 20 minutes out of my life in a group regression, and it kind of changed the course of everything that she did and, and thought about. I mean, these things can be powerful, can't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They're transformative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this group progression and going there and listening to Dolores and having this group progression was was that the thing that got you into taking the class then, Holly? Oh, I came home from Sacramento, I think, on a Sunday and signed up for the class on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I have to do yeah. this. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So, th- you know, that's that's just amazing. So, um, so did you go have, did you try to find a practitioner anywhere then, Holly, or did, did you just, just take the class? I, and, I mean, how did, uh-huh. I took. I, well, I did the online training, um, right. which you know I do. I do a lot of traveling um, mm-hmm. for my work, and so that that's what worked out for me because um, I spend a lot of time alone in hotel rooms um, sure. at night, and so it was great great place to learn. And um, and yeah, so luckily I was living in Phoenix then, and there were several uh, practitioners at that time, um, mm-hmm. and connected with one of them, and we traded sessions. Um, right. Uh, well, I guess while while I was towards the back end of the of the training, mm-hmm. and then after I got trained, um, you know, the the recommendation is is that we do several you know true practice sessions um, where we're not charging people, and you know, it, it isn't sure. necessarily for serious therapeutic work, but we're just you know getting the training wheels off basically. Well, at the time, my daughter was 19 and my son was 21, and so I would line up all their friends, any friend, <laughs> any of these young adults that would uh-huh. let me practice on them. I'd bring them in the house, and they were glorious, glorious people to practice with, beautiful golden souls and just innocence and just, you know, very receptive to the process. And I sit, and I so I did, I, so I did dozens of these sessions with with my the friends of my children, and um, I, I sit there and I think, oh gosh, if someone had told me what my life purpose was when I was nineteen, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? <laughs> How lucky these kids are! <laughs> kind of amazing. So it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And so then you um you two have been swapping swapping sessions then. So mm-hmm. um I guess we've got a an interesting facilitated from um from Holly that has to do with a bat and some other things. Some <laughs> some Doris Cannon concepts like the backdrop people, which is a fascinating concept and and Mm -hmm. some other things and and Dolores I believe herself may have even made um, an impression or an appearance there would you tell us about that session so where where Barbara was facilitating yeah sure so um, so Barbara and I took a road trip um, to Arkansas we drove together Uh, I picked her up in Phoenix and then uh, we drove we drove what what was it Barb? I think it's fourteen hours or sixteen hours, and uh, so across two days, so we had lots of time to um to uh talk it up in the car for two days and uh, got to the level two training in Arkansas back in july and we were we were bunking together and so we had uh, we had lots of of uh of time in the evenings to to the practice um sessions with each other and um so in one session where Barbara was facilitating me, I, I had I had facilitated Barbara multiple times. So we had a we had a keyword for Barbara. For, for those that are unfamiliar with it, we have the ability to when the when the client is in deep hypnosis, we can insert a keyword so that if we want to have an, another session with that client, then we can skip through all of the induction. Um, script and goes straight into deep hypnosis through the use of the keyword. Well, I had a keyword mm-hmm. for 
Barbara, because I had had multiple sessions where I facilitated and she was the client, but we had never been in this in the opposite situation because we had never physically been together after she got her training. So, right. um, it so she, she, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. So she had to take me years. all, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had to take me all the way through all of the um, past life script, and and it was funny because. My first past life experience in that session was as a bat, and 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 my this goes to show you how what kind of a sense of humor our higher selves can have because I in 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 three D world in my in my waking day I hate bats. Some people are <laughs> afraid of rats. Some people are afraid of snakes. Some people are afraid of spiders. I don't mind any of those. I cannot stand bats frighten me, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I I really don't like them. Well, this this was the second time they showed me uh, myself as a bat in a past life. And, of course, Barb asks, you know, at the end of the session, why did you show her that past life? And they said, um, we just think it's funny. You know, we like to poke fun at her because she doesn't like bats, and we think <laughs> it's funny that, you know, to give her that first, first-hand perspective. So... Um, so they mm-hmm. have a sense of humor. But then, um, so we, we went through the bat life, and it wasn't very it wasn't a very long life. I, I ended up breaking a wing and then dying. But um, So Barb, as we do in, often in sessions, when, when a past life is very short or boring, um, not much happening, um, then we'll do a second or maybe even a third or fourth past life. And so she, she directs me into a second past life. And at this time, I go to become the universe. I am all that is. I am God's source. <laughs> so wow, Bar realizes. So Bar realizes she has uh, she has source on the line. So she she kicks into gear to ask some questions. So Barb, you want to you want to reflect on what your perception was at that point? Yeah, I had asked um, Holly where would she like to go and. She goes straight to source, and then I found myself talking with God. And uh, it took me a couple seconds here, and I had to do a surrender and just allow whatever questions that were in me to come out. So this is because I didn't have any questions prepared uh, to talk and ask God. So I asked her, or asked God, about the, the, the future of uh, the earth, and um, and uh, how how does her evolution, her ascension, uh, play a role in the entire universe? And it's a very eloquent um, course on eventually Mother Earth is going to this old Earth is going to die, and her sister moon is going to come into the the gravitational pull of the old earth and then they will cause a some what of a implosion where they will then their mass will go out to the stars and then form new planets it's very beautiful and i had asked well what about human life at that time you know and God said that um, human life will be long, long gone when that happens. And as most people know, if this has been following the work of Dolores Cannon and um, and others know that the new earth, um, Mother Earth ascended 12, 12, 12. Mm-hmm. And so what we're... You know, we're, all of us here are going back and forth between the dimensions. Some days we're in fifth. We have moments in fifth and fourth and third. And eventually everyone will, um, that is meant to go to the new earth, will go to the new earth. Others will mm-hmm. go to other uh, missions and places in the universe, or others will be um, switched off. And we can talk about the backdrop people later. I also mm-hmm. asked about my, the Apollo moon landing. I wanted to uh-huh. know if it 
really did occur. I wanted to put this to rest because I've heard so many different theories that it was just a big hoax. And my dad had worked on the Apollo uh, Moon Project. Did he? In Florida. Yeah, he he wrote, uh, he worked for General Electric, and he wrote the logistic equation for the computers that detonated the explosives on the capsule when the uh, splash landed into the ocean. Those windows and doors are welded shut. You know, they don't have latches. <laughs> right. So they use explosives to uh, discharge the, the window and the doors out so that the uh, astronauts can... Um, step out and get into the water and then be taken on helicopter to the uh, the ships. Mm-hmm. And so God said, yes, it did happen. Yeah. Uh, however, I asked a little further about what is happening on the other side of the moon that we don't see, the dark side. <laughs> I had Good heard, question. Yeah, I had heard that there um, is a lot of shenanigans going on uh, with uh, earthly and non-earthly uh, beings, and that uh, there are human humans that are being taken there, and it involves uh, the rogue government or the, a, a branch of an organization that is doing this type of activity for for some gain. However. God said, really, it, it is really futile what they're doing. It's just like a nuisance. Um, hmm. the, the way I feel about that is that these are experiences that people have signed up for to help them uh, in their their soul evolution. And they also have that opportunity to see the big picture and to do the forgiveness work, and which you know, erases all that karma and stuff they may have accumulated in, in past lives and past experiences. Hmm. And, mm-hmm. um, and I also asked about Mars. I wanted to know what was going on there. And uh, there are uh, uh, third-dimensional beings, uh, non-three-dimensional beings there. Uh, and that... Uh, this is some place that eventually in the future that's where humans will be living. Now, what what does that really mean or did you ask more questions about that? Do you mean like um groups of humans like just um, you know, um it will, it kind will, of satellite it will become the earth. It will become so the earth for people. And I'm sure they will be terraforming it and uh and I think we must remember that uh, our Earth planet here isn't the only uh, Earth-based planet uh, in the, in the universe or in the in the galaxies. Mm-hmm. There's there's more. So mm-hmm. I imagine as we leave this uh, existence here, that we can go to other planets. You know, I myself mm-hmm. come from a, a planet outside the solar system. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, what? Why don't you tell us about that? <laughs> well, I, I really can't right now because um, that I know the name of the planet, and I'm saving it for my second book to my autobiography that's been published. I will reveal that name. But I do, <laughs> in my first book, I do um, share with people that uh, my other form is a being called a Zagian. And uh, we are beings that don't have emotion. And I'm here to learn about the emotion of love. I'm here to discover it, uh, teach it, um, know all I can about it. And then at night, I go into a form of liquid light and I go up to a broadcast station. That's a big, huge... um, it's like a big uh, uh, white sphere, and I broadcast it out uh, to teach the uh, the beings out there about love. I saw that during a uh, 
uh, a past life regression. Uh, that was not QHHT many years ago. I think, too, That's Candace, I, I could interject mm-hmm. another really sure. interesting thing that came out of that session. Because one of the things that I struggle with is I have I have one foot in a very technical role in the corporate role in the cor- corporate world, right? I'm a, a scientist and, and a statistician and engineer, and and then I try to. I try to, but I have the other foot in this metaphysical healing modality, right? And Mm so I'm always trying to figure out, well, which is the right one? Which is which should I be focused on? Which shouldn't I? You know, these these two worlds. There's really not a big overlap right now, right? And so Barb asked my higher self, you know, how will this be rectified? How will um, you know, which side will win out in the end and or which one should I focus on? And in that session, the higher self said, fascinating answer. They said that in the very, very near future, our top physicists will make discoveries, physics discoveries that can't be explained without metaphysics. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so it's a, yes, it's a very short period of time before there is no separation that mm-hmm. we'll all realize that physics is metaphysics. And so don't worry about it, Holly, because the two the two the, the two sides, the two groups will become will be integrated in the future. Uh, Holly, that that makes me very curious about your colleagues in the very technical corporate world. Do do they know what you do when you're not uh, in <laughs> hotel rooms doing your technical corporate kind yeah. of <laughs> so, trips? Some do. You talk? And, uh-huh. Yes. And, in fact, I have had sessions with some of my corporate colleagues, um, and mm-hmm. they have found – incredible things out about themselves and their uh, all simultaneous lives and past lives and uh, it's a very very interesting things and uh, you know obviously out of a concern for privacy I won't won't share any of those of now, but yeah yeah that's happened mm-hmm. sure that's amazing so you are very left brain technical um, mm-hmm. colleagues in that world were open to this kind of exploration mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Were you surprised about that? Um, not as surprised as they were after they had the experiences. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, <laughs> that's a that's a really good good question. So, um, <laughs> may I ask back back to the session where I guess um. Um, Barbara was leading Holly. Is that the one where Dolores came through? You know, we're all still big Dolores fans, and any Dolores news on this side of the veil or the other is something that we're all so interested in. Yes, we she both came did through. Yeah. She came through. She came through both of mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so mm-hmm. we have more than one story to talk about with Dolores. With mm-hmm. you, yay! <laughs> Let's sure. hear it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Barb, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. When I was talking um, with Holly and um, Holly's subconscious, I asked um, it would be possible for Dolores to come through, and um, sure enough, she did. And uh, I, I always ask her, you know, uh, do you have a message for us? And she said that she feels very uh, comforted to see that the learning is continuing with QHHT. Uh, It's being, the technique is being perpetuated and expanded. And Mm -hmm. uh, she also said that quantum healing hypnosis technique is critically important and is beneficial for those going through the upcoming difficult times. Mm -hmm. For those that had a QHHT session, they're going to have an easier time going through all these trauma experiences, especially what's going on in the news right now around 
the world and in the U.S. Uh, people have had these uh, uh, sessions. They're able to see the big picture. They're able to see that, you know, it's all going to work out. And mm-hmm. that with their connection to their higher self, the higher self was able to uh, let them know that, yeah, you are safe. You are, you're going to be just fine. You're going to have some challenges, but this is all part of the lessons that you signed up for. Um, uh, I, Dolores, think, I think Barbara, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. What? Dolores uh, asked that all the practitioners follow the orthodoxy of her work. And what was very interesting, we were chuckling about this um, the other day, was that Dolores used that word orthodoxy. That means means authorized or generally accepted theory, doctrine, or practice. She told me to go look up the definition (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and the way this is how it just really validates that this was Dolores because I asked mm-hmm. Holly do you ever use that word orthodoxy and Holly said no I said neither do I <laughs> ever in my entire <laughs> life so uh, so what was she talking about about the orthodoxy of the changes uh, that are part of the evolution of the QHHT that it must be honored regarding any experimentation or validation. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's those of us like myself who love to experiment um, on myself. Mm-hmm. I, I will go places that other people don't. Um, however, I do know the safeguards. I know the parameters. I've done things that put me in situations which um, are not a good place to be uh, metaphysically. However, we have this backup system that we're not even aware of that comes into play. And um, I'm always grateful for that. Okay, So this is something that she just wants us to be aware of to make sure that um, we, if we're seeing the same information coming through multiple people, mm-hmm. like she did, that probably is the truth. And it's even though we're not here to force any belief on anyone, try to convince anyone of anything, it's there out in the open for people to ponder and to see how it fits into their reality, into their belief system. Because that's the bottom line to all of this. What do you believe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, t- Candace, when I when I was facilitating, then um, Barb and Dolores came through, and at that time um, through Barb, and at that time we were right smack dab in the middle of our training, so we had lots of questions about. Of course, I had asked her about my technique, and she gave me some advice, and. I asked her about Barb's technique, and she gave Barb some specific advice. And then we said, "Well, do you have any? Do you have any advice for our class in general?" And Dolores said, "Yeah, relax, have fun." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was great. That you know, we were maybe taking all taking ourselves a little too seriously at that moment, and it was time to just just relax and have fun with the technique. So that was. That was really cool. And then I asked her, I had just just finished rereading Conversations with Nostradamus, all three volumes, and amazing, amazing books. And for anyone that, that has read Dolores and hasn't read those books, I strongly encourage people to read those. Just just unbelievable um, how, how, that, how the, the content of those books came about I think it was across four different people, Dolores connected directly in real time, not not from a historical perspective, but but directly to Nostradamus and had conversations with Nostradamus. And so I wanted to ask Dolores, I said, hey, so now that you're on the other side, because when she wrote the conversations with Nostradamus, she was really flummoxed with how 
whole time thing worked, you know. How could she be mm-hmm. sitting in her office, you know, in the 1990s mm-hmm. and be talking to Nostradamus in the 1400s, How, like directly with him? How does time work then? And so I asked in the session when Dolores was coming through Barb, I said, hey, so now that you're on the other side, tell us about this time thing. <laughs> Did you figure <laughs> out the Nostradamus thing? Oh, now that... Do you have do you know have that secret? And uh and so yeah, she said that, you know, she said all is connected within, within, within. And she said it's really, really difficult for how for us mm-hmm. to understand how time really works. But because everything is actually occurring at the same time and existing at the same time, there are these portals that we can use to communicate with people that are in a different time because everything's really happening all at the same time. And then I said, well, is, it this, is that the same portal we're using in QHHT for the past life? And she said, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So we're, we are using those same time portals um, to, in, in the past life as she used in Nostradamus. Yeah. And I think that those, you know, just in going back and recently rereading those three books, um, I just want to encourage Candace, your listeners, to to read those because we're here. We're in the time when Nostradamus's predictions were the most dire, and um, Dolores had three different um, astrologers read the interpretations that Nostradamus had given her, and uh, 2029 is the consensus year of of when um, the most important aspects of those prophecies come about. So reading those books right now is really important for everybody. And she also said that the portal that she's talking about is located in the mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the Nostradamus, uh, connection is just so so huge, and I spent quite a bit of time with Dolores uh, in the years before she died. And you know, Dolores could be enigmatic, and she could be she was such an interesting, wonderful woman. And I would talk to her a little bit about Dolores, and for the most part, uh, notwithstanding what you've just shared, Holly. She would say, um, when people would ask in classes, she would say that for the most part, um, things, energetics, timelines were changed. Um, I don't know that it, you know, it, that it's anything that can be considered uh, nothing to think about anymore. But she has come through <clears throat> in communication in my own life where it has been... Um, absolutely stressed that one of the most important things about her work with Nostradamus was how she actually communicated that type of communication, which is something that, you know, somewhat different than going to a client's past life or a client, right? You know, mm-hmm. you know basically for, mm-hmm. for our listeners out there who are wondering what the heck we're talking about, <clears throat> Imagine, if you will, this scenario, because this is what's going on with Dolores and Nostradamus. And, and how crazy is this? But she did this so regularly that she was able to publish three thick volumes. So this isn't like from one-off fluke. This is this thing that she did, and this is what she did. <clears throat> Pardon me. She would have a client who would go into trance that client within trance would become kind of like a telephone or or a conduit, a way for um, Nostradamus to speak through the client. Now imagine Nostradamus, um, and I'm going to forget how many hundreds of years ago it was. You gals help me how many hundreds of years ago he was alive. But um, So hundreds of years ago, what he's doing is he is in his study, and he is actually – Scrying, and the the word is scrying, S C 
C-R-Y-I-N-G, which is what we all kind of know as the wizard looking into a crystal ball. That's called scrying. You can put yourself into a trance and, and take yourself into other realms and other dimensions by using a crystal ball, by using a mirror. What Nostradamus actually used was a shiny piece of black rock called obsidian. And he put himself into a trance by, you know, staring into a black rock. And what he ended up with was into the future talking to a person named Dolores Cannon. Now, how crazy is that? But it's, it was repeated, you know, over, you know, months, and I'm not even sure. Um, yeah, over four, six, uh, or more clients, I believe, different people. Right. And it's just this amazing, wonderful story. And when Dolores had this whole thing going on where she was talking with Nostradamus, the first client where this, this seemingly magic thing happened, she was a, a natural a somnambulist. And she <clears throat> was a very great client for Dolores. And, and you know what? She actually just got tired of it. She, you know, she was spending time laying on her sofa over at Dolores's house or whatever. And actually this woman says to Dolores, if I'm remembering the story, right. She says, you know, Dolores, this, I, I'm going to have to go. I think I'm moving to Alaska. <laughs> and Dolores is like, Oh no. Right. And says, okay. you know, gosh, before you do that, you know, one more chance, give me one more session. And she has another session. She gets as much information as possible. And she tells Nostradamus, um, you know, through her client, this is our, this is going to be our last session. And that's when Nostradamus says, oh, but it's not, because now I know how to get a hold of you. And Dolores is like, wow. And Nostradamus gives her like a secret phrase. And then Dolores sort of shrugs and goes on with her work. And then I'm not sure how long after that she has a client, just a regular client gets all the way to the end of the session and says, is there anything else? And then the client, poof, says the secret phrase. And there Dolores, you know, <laughs> Dolores is back talking wow. with Nostradamus. I just love that story. And Holly and mm-hmm. and Barbara, I think one of my favorite stories, I just finished the story, but I have to tell another one because it's my favorite. Um, have you all heard about, about this story with Nostradamus and Dolores? So mostly, you know, they have, People out there talk about Nostradamus experts, you know, the theory of Nostradamus. Well, to be very, very plain and honest and direct here, Dolores simply said, hey, Nostradamus, what did you mean by this quatrain? And Nostradamus Mm -hmm. would say, oh, I meant yada, yada, X, Y, Z, or whatever. All she did was Mm -hmm. basically be a secretary. She didn't theorize. She just took the word straight from him. You know, it was direct. Mm-hmm. It wasn't any mm-hmm. thinking. It wasn't being, you know, she she didn't have theories or here. This right. thing, you know, it was a direct right. conversation with Nostradamus. Right. So it was pretty, if you think about it, it you know, it's just kind of, you know, dictation for hours right. and hours and well, hours with all of his stuff. And and, and to Candace, and it, Candace too, mm-hmm. when she first made contact with him, she had never read anything about him. Right. She didn't even know how to spell his name. She had to go look him up <laughs> afterwards. I mean, mm-hmm. that's amazing. And, you know, we, and we, we all as QHHT practitioners find ourselves. I remember, um, you know, first like writing down the word Arcturus, A, R, R, what, what? You know, I didn't, I'd never heard of it before. But um, mm-hmm. just to finish out this little story, and then I definitely want to let your ladies uh, talk about that. But I, I think this may be one of my favorite stories about Dolores. So, at one point, they're kind of finishing up with the dictation, and it happens to be something about medicine. And Dolores says something about her doctor or whatever, and maybe mentioning something about her doctor and then using the term she. And I believe this is the, the part how it, how it happened. And Nostradamus says, what do you mean she, the doctor, she? You can't be talking about a doctor if you're saying she. And and Dolores says, well, yeah, in my time, there's people, you know, doctors can definitely be women. And doctors, 
and lawyers and scientists and astronauts and fire pilots and, mm-hmm. you know, anything else. You know, women can do anything men can do. And Nostradamus basically says, get out. That's just <laughs> not possible. And they have, like, this little <laughs> tiny argument between each other. And my favorite part is that Dolores actually says, well, I'm a woman. And do, and do you know that Nostradamus actually didn't know that until that moment? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They hadn't yeah. really discussed it, and it was this big revelation. And But for me, the funny thing is, is this man is talking into a rock to a woman who's four or five hundred years into the future. And this is believable to him. But the idea that a woman can be a doctor really just, you know, is, is, is incomprehensible. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 If I could be a fly, if I personally can go back into time at any point in the time and and go be a fly on the wall, I would go to that moment in Dolores Cannon's life with uh, and in conversations with Nostradamus. Mm-hmm. I don't know about with you two, but that yeah. that story just just tickles me every time I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the whole book, and he would get upset at how horribly translated his quatrains were and how they had just gotten them completely wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Really great um great information mm-hmm. about Nostradamus. Well well that was really that was really fun. Well how about we move on? What other kind of sessions have you ladies had? What kind of like convoluted sessions or, or maybe the backdrop people, can we talk about them a little bit? I, I believe that Dolores' new book, Convoluted Five, has a little more information in it about backdrop people. What did you two discover? A lot. Barb, Barb why don't you tell us? This is um, just a little project of mine is to learn more about the backdrop people. And um, even from, gosh, I think it was a, uh, I had a, session with a wonderful woman who was a an indigo and I had asked about um the backdrop people and that and that concept. And let's see, I'm trying to think here what uh what was she saying about that? They well they are here to help us not uh, feel sad or sorrow because many people are already being taken off the planet. They're already going to the new earth, to other dimensions and other places, other missions, and they're going in great numbers. And so if, if there's a lot of people missing, then people who are not consciously aware and awake will feel lonely. They don't realize that they're never alone. They have angels and guides and, of course, the higher self um, Mm -hmm. and God and everything with them. And uh, so I had asked uh, more about the the backdrop people and what, um, you know, how, how can you tell a backdrop person from, a sentient being, a, an enlightened person who is on their path and learning their lessons here. And basically the backdrop people is a concept, a beautiful concept that the higher self or subconscious has come up with, and they can be different types. And I learned these varieties by asking through Holly and Holly Sessions about the different types. So there's one, for instance, is considered a walk-out person. In other words, a person who has decided they are done. In fact, I have a dear friend who I know is a walk-out. And she leaves, and the human body is available for another, uh, either a program to go in there or another being to go in there and use that body. And the the personality uh, will be changed. The the person um, may become what 
would be disinterested or they get upset easily about the smallest of, of consequences and, and things about life. And that's one of the programs that the higher self has put in to these uh, backdrop people. It's, it's uh, programming of complaining. People are used to uh, complaining, and so you feel like, well, this is pretty much normal. It's like, it's like having white noise in the background so you don't feel lonely. It's like turning on the TV or the radio while you're home alone and doing your, your business. We also um, found out that there is something what's called a human suit, and that's where you have a physical body that is the, 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 the soul leaves, that, that personality leaves, and now this suit is available for uh, specialized beings in the universe that need to come and do some work. They may come in to that body, do their work, and leave, and another one comes in. And uh, these are um, beings that are here to help uh, the planet evolve, and they're helping with, well, things like uh, uh, settling disputes, um, changing the uh, the dynamics, learning more about um, technology, um, you know, advanced concepts, and let's see what else. Holly, is there another one that I'm forgetting about? Yeah, the last variety. the last variety is there are the of course you know we're 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 at the moment in 3D Earth of huge transition um and so there are there are souls that where the body exists but they haven't yet committed to a full incarnation and a full mission on earth so they're still kind of sitting on the fence so the body's operating day by day basis but the soul is kind of going mm, I'm not sure I'm going to stick around for all of this <laughs> or not yet I'm not mm-hmm. not committed yet and so, and actually, Barb had, uh, I think Barb, had a client that might have been uh, a variety of the of this type. But, um, yeah, so there's, so there's the folks that have ascended, the millions and millions of folks that are already on 5D Earth, but yet the bodies continue because if all those millions of people suddenly die, then the vibration of those remaining would go down, and that would be bad for the ascension of the remainder of us. So they... The bodies continue to go on, but they're backdrop people now. They're not. Um, they're not real sentient uh, um, <clears throat> souls because the souls have already ascended. Then there's the suits that that other entities can come in and out of at at will. Um, and then there's these these varieties that well, the the soul hasn't really committed to the mission yet and is still testing out this human 3D thing before they commit. And then there's a fourth type um, that are the the pure holograms. Um, they they your your higher self manifests these uh, these things that appear to be other people, but they're nothing but a hologram. They don't actually exist as a person ever at any time, um, and they they just come at you um, appear before you for some purpose that your higher self has put put in front of you. I think the I think Barb, those are the four kind. I think we got it. Yeah, and do you do you remember Candace uh Com- Dolor- Dolores' convoluted universe book four? And she that's when she talked about the backdrop people and how mm-hmm. she used to go into the airport and just kinda like wonder how many of these people are backdrop people. Mm-hmm. Well, she kinda played one on me when I uh left uh training last July. Uh with Holly. Holly drove me to the Albuquerque, New Mexico airport. And because of Hurricane Dolores was uh, messing up <laughs> the <laughs> weather, uh, we had wind and lightning storms. Uh, so mm-hmm. I was stuck there about 11 hours at the airport. And mm-hmm. I was reading one of Dolores' books, uh, Jesus and the Essenes. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting there by myself. And I look up, and there's this woman walking by, and she has 
the silliest grin, smile on her face, and she's looking straight at me as she walks by. <laughs> and I asked my higher self, who was that? And they said, Dolores. <laughs> so, so explain that joke for us. Did you think, like, that might have been a suit that Dolores jumped into so that she could oh, grin yeah. at you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she's, mm-hmm. she knows I'm um, very interested in uh, doing this research about the backdrop people. And um, so she uh, she did a beautiful demonstration for me. I loved it. Isn't that amazing? It's just, yeah. it's just amazing. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking as you're talking about the, the different kinds of backdrop people, et cetera, and some other things that I've known about creation and holograms, it, it's my understanding, I, I think that I um, did some uh, asking a, a client myself during a session about some of this. There's actually the idea if, if enough people give energy towards a hologram and, and enough time passes and enough attention is placed on it. Um, it's my understanding that even something like a hologram can graduate to some sort of more tangible, actual, physical existence. Have Have you ladies ever run into anything like that? Well, I, I, I had that one client that I'm pretty sure is um, one of the type that is not truly committed. Uh, uh, she didn't have a very good session. In other words, it was very um, left brain for her. She would not get out of that left brain. And so uh, we, I specifically asked about that client through Holly's uh, higher self, and I was told that's who that person is. And so what I've been doing is uh, praying and sending energy to that person so that they will, you know, hopefully evolve to uh, the best uh, potential. Always uh, be positive and uh, send that love, that um, inspiration uh, Mm -hmm. for those people. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to say, Holly? Yes. Yeah, I think too, Candice, um, and, you know, one of the one of the fantastic things about QHHT and, and the past life experiences is they they aren't always human, right? Like I was saying, I was a bat, <laughs> right? Yeah, I've been an ant. I've had clients that have been rocks, mountains, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. you know, all of these seemingly inanimate objects, but they are a tree. Um, so. We have the ability to incarnate into anything, right, into any manifestation. And and sometimes we kind of maybe put a little too much emphasis on the human experience, whereas there's some Mm -hmm. very, very wonderful, rich experiences that are are not human. And in all cases, um, the soul and the spirit is seeking the lesson that it needs to seek in order for the soul to grow. And that, that, that may or may not be human. And, um, and so bringing a hologram, you know, blessing and praying and, and uh, focusing on bringing a soul in, or I'm sorry, a a hologram into being, uh, into sentience, um, I think really has to be the decision of a soul to choose that that um, vehicle to incarnate in, and then the incarnation has to be serving a purpose for that soul. And it may or may not be a backdrop person or a, a, a hologram of a person, but it could be as a rock or a tree or a mountain. Yeah. yeah whatever, however evolved they want to be. Mm-hmm. What they signed up for. You know, I, when I think about some of this, I, I also think about um, the 
the tendency of humans as a group to also want or or um, or yearn for something. And what I'm thinking about right now is something like when a beloved person passes away. And, and let's take the you know the ever present, sometimes joked about idea that people see Elvis Presley and have seen him after his death. And I've asked about mm-hmm. that in sessions sometimes too. And some of what that is, is, you know, people will say, well, I was here or I was there and I saw Elvis and he did this or whatever. And some of that um, is my understanding is that human consciousness, there's enough people gathered, interested, wanting, yearning to see, um, to feel, to, to have that personality back that it actually manifests something that other humans can see um, and, and talk about and think is actually physical. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah. astonishing how much power we have. Right. I think, too, that this, this also speaks to, Candace, the, uh, the near-death experience, and I'll, and I'll align that with what we do in QHHT and the, the, the goal, the ideal in a, in a QHHT session is that, that we take the client through the death experience in their past life situation because we want, we want the person to understand how smooth and tra- you know, how smooth that transition is and how not not frightening you know how peaceful mm-hmm. um, that death experience really is that takes away a lot of a lot of our our fears on a day to day basis when we understand how easy that transition is and some people you know we have the NDE experience where some people say you know they see the tunnel of light or they see Jesus or they see their grandmother greeting them or whatever and 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 we can have that in the in the QHHT experience as well in the death experience you know oh I I saw Jesus or I saw saw something and these are these are manifestations that we make to to the purpose I think is to is to calm ourselves you know is to there's a purpose there of that manifestation whether it's real or not real doesn't matter that serves a purpose mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Holly, you make such an excellent point about uh, going through the death experience. The humans, especially in our time right now, we don't tend to honor death. We tend to fear it. We certainly tend to avoid even talking about it. And there's something quite fascinating that we learn in doing this work. And, and one of the things is exactly what you said, that it's it's really very it's a very easy transition. Um, what's hard is is the the people um, who have to stay behind. That that's who it's difficult for. And as a matter of fact, some people will talk about uh, maybe torture or some sort of horrible death or being burned at the stake. And haven't you, ladies, found this? And isn't this interesting that you can in these sessions learn that the soul leaves while the body still may be uh, apparently in in a lot of trauma, in a lot of um, pain or maybe, you know, even yelling, et cetera, and the soul's already gone. They are not experiencing that. I've found that That's over correct. and over again. Mm-hmm. Haven't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we help yeah. them not to feel uh, any discomfort. And so they're able to look at, what happened and and talk about it and it's all recorded. I also give my clients an example so so they know what it's like and to see that it's just like watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think this goes back to the backdrop people as as well too because I think this the the soul has the ability to to exit when the soul chooses. You know, when it, I explained to a lot of my clients that I've had clients that were, they were a rock, their past life was a rock. Talk about boring. Oh, my gosh. That's an incredibly boring existence. <laughs> and so one, one, one interesting question is, well, how does a rock die, right? How does, how does that soul ever exit the rock? Well, the, the soul just 
chooses to exit the rock. The, the, the incarnation is complete, the contracts are complete, and the soul chooses to leave. The, the rock doesn't have to die, you know, because the rock can't <laughs> die. The soul just simply chooses to leave. And it's okay. kind of the same okay, with the Holly. people. Holly, I'm going to have to take a little exception to your boring comment, um, just a little bit, because I don't know about you two ladies, but I've had lots of rocks, <laughs> lots of rocks, and uh, mm-hmm. when I talk to clients about this, I think it's very interesting, because if you think about, I mean, think about our lives right now how frenetic our lives right, are right now. I think about how many hours of sleep I had just last night when I woke up, when I went to office today, how I got home and how I threw the computer, you know, over here. And, I, you know, I'm like, it's three minutes till showtime. I mean, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, our lives are so frenetic right now. And sometimes mm-hmm. having a QHHT session, our clients are shown lives as rocks. Well, Mm -hmm. what does that rock get to do? That rock just experiences time passing, erosion, Mm -hmm. a lizard Mm -hmm. walking by, the clouds. Mm -hmm. There's this peacefulness Mm -hmm. and there is this expansion of, and and a very different um, perception of what time is. And one of the fascinating things about doing this work is, we can go with our clients into these experiences, somebody who's experiencing a rock, and while they're experiencing a rock and, and they're able to live and notice what's going on and to, I mean, let's think about it, to be solid, to be grounded, mm-hmm. to be rested, mm-hmm. to not be frantic, mm-hmm. to notice what's going mm-hmm. on around you. And while you're mm-hmm. being a rock, you get to go, oh, yeah, I I can maybe do that a little bit in my life, too. It's like you're reminding yourself as a human what is also possible for you. Mm-hmm. It's really kind mm-hmm. of amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go mm-hmm. back and you have these, quote, unquote, past lives, you can bring forth and experience and then kind of reinvigorate mm-hmm. and, and bring back skills and knowledge and, and peace and balance in some of these mm-hmm. ways. So so there's some real mm-hmm. reasons why people are experiencing lives as rocks, even though we all sort of giggle mm-hmm. about that because everybody thinks, right. you know, <laughs> that, it's, that it is quite uh, dull and it is quite a movie, right. I, I suppose. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough, Candace. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. So how about um how about like the strangest thing that you could ever um uh that it, it took you a long time to figure out exactly what it was that that your clients were experiencing and and I'll I'll start with my own example. It one of one of my clients one of the longest times that it took for me, you know, lots of back and forth questions before I could figure out what is it that you're experiencing. This woman uh ended up telling me and was able to say that she was a piece of gravity existing on a certain spot on the moon. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. I guess the most uh, the most um, unusual one that I ever had was um, a client who who was who is somnambulistic, naturally somnambulistic. Meaning, and for those that are listening that might not understand that word, um, they are out in the, in the trance state. It's like they're under general anesthesia. They have zero zero awareness of the conscious um, surroundings. And uh, so the client was somnambulistic, and it turns out that this client was living a, is living a simultaneous life on a different planet. And that was really um, quite disturbing. In the somnambulistic state, she was, she was really wrestling with trying to basically <laughs> experience these uh, two simultaneous existences. 
and uh, and and is actually and is still living that simultaneous life in this in this other planet uh, today. So that was a little bit of a mind bender. <laughs> and you said it was a woman. How did she feel about it when she um, when it was all over? I mean, when you debriefed it, and talked it, about what happened. Yeah. That, the whole QHHT experience to, for her was life-altering, absolutely life-altering. Changed her entire concept, belief, structure. Um, and uh, we ended up having several sessions and um, and investigating it further and further. So, yeah, it, mm-hmm. was, it, was, it was life-altering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about you, Barbara? What, what's some of the most kind of mind-bending, it took you a while to figure out what your client was experiencing kind of session that you've had? Well, uh, I did, I never had a rock, but I did have a client who was a tree, which was very, very lovely, and uh, it was a very beautiful experience. But the one that had me wondering what is going on here was a client who was a mermaid. And what was interesting is usually, and Dolores has said this in her books, you you come off the cloud, you come down to the surface. Well, she didn't want to go down off the cloud. And I just thought in my head and said, would you like to go up? And she said, yes. (laughs) And she realizes it, it She is now in the water as she's going up. Now, at this time, she's laying on the bed, and her arms are flailing back and forth through the (laughs) air, almost hitting me. I'm dodging her arms. You can imagine being in the water, going through the water. And her journey as a mermaid was to go to the surface. There was some danger up lurking for her to go up to the surface of the water. So we mm-hmm. explored uh, her fear of this. And this was one of her missions as a mermaid. And she was able to go through that fear very lovely, and she made it all the way to the surface of the water, and then she realized she can't go back. She's completed her journey. So then she Hmm. makes her way to the shore and kind of like moves her body up on the sand to the rocks. And while she's laying there, she becomes a lizard, a huge lizard. And after that, we explored the lizard's life. And the the lizard eventually uh, was in the area at the time where the earth was still, uh, after it had been formed, there were volcanoes. And uh, she was pummeled by rocks from an explosion and the cataclysmic uh, flow from a volcano. Uh, And, of course, she went through the death scene very beautifully. So oh, that was my most uh, amazing one that I really uh, enjoyed, which kind of uh, had to, like, make up. If you're not going to go down, why not go up? And found out it was the perfect <laughs> direction to go. So that was fun. That does sound like fun. I just had a mermaid um, about a week ago or so. <laughs> yeah. the, and when And actually, so so for her... She was like, well, I think they're clouds. Those are the strangest clouds I've ever seen. And she's like, they're, I don't know, they're kind of purple clouds. They're kind of heavy. They're, they don't really. And what she was actually talking about was waves underwater. She was seeing, like, you know, different kinds of water moving past her. But, you know, she, she hadn't quite settled into the experience yet. And mm-hmm. she was, you know, so she's thinking she's in the sky and that these are clouds. And. And, you know, at some part, she still she just doesn't know. And so I have her do the thing that all QHHT practitioners know to do, which is say, well, how about turn around? You know, what's behind you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and and she, she, 
she turned around. She said, and she said, you know, what's behind you? She said, it's a fish. <laughs> There's a fish <laughs> behind me. <laughs> it's this mm-hmm. big yellow fish, you know, and and that's when she's like, oh my gosh, I'm in the water, and then that's. You know, we figured out some of the same thing. And you're right. Uh, my mermaid also had a, um, you know, I'm going to go to the surface, even though, I'm, you know, I've been told by my other mermaid people that I've known that that can be a very dangerous thing. You know, very interesting. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. I think it's, it's a lesson that's about walking through that fear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would, it was so interesting. She, um, <clears throat> in the end, she was like, I just, you know, and I, I, and she hadn't even told me this in the in the interview, but she loved swimming, you know. And suddenly she was like, Gosh, I love swimming. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it was also her her higher self actually had told her about being different. This was some of this was being different because she was actually hauled up um, in a net by some men on a boat mm. and it ended up, it ended up being the death of her. And she had a really interesting death experience as that mermaid. She just, um, uh, basically in, in, in the net and looking at these men and they were poking her with a stick, you know, I mean, mm. you can imagine humans doing that. It's like, what, what the hell is mm-hmm. this? Well, you know, and they just, you know, this this stick poking and pulling her up out of the water like that basically killed her. And she didn't fight, and she didn't yell, and she didn't scream, and it wasn't traumatic. She it was she was like staring them in their eyes, and then she just kind of left her body, and she was gone. It's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she was uh, she was so shocked. She was so shocked when she got she couldn't even really say the word mermaid. She really she'd already kind of figured out that that she would uh, be able to accept the concept of a past life, but not a mermaid life. It, that um, and her higher self, I said, well, why did you show her that? You know, why did you show her that? Well, because she thinks she has an open mind. Her higher self said, but she yeah. really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so how about some healing stories, ladies? Um, you know, mm-hmm. we've we've got half hour or so more to talk. Can you can you talk to me about some of your best healing stories? I'd love to hear some of them. We well, have lots. one of the <laughs> yeah one Go of ahead, Holly. one yeah. of the things yeah one of the things that we did in our in our shared sessions in in Arkansas was some surrogate healing, um, and that worked fabulously. I think. I think Barb, we we had four surrogate. We we did healing for surrogately for four people, four or five or maybe more yeah, while, in one session. While I was, uh, you facilitated for me, and we did four. Mm-hmm. In that one, yeah, and over yeah. That's incredibly amazing because you know we aren't um, we aren't. Uh, Allowed, or we we choose not to practice with children, um, you know, the people under the age of eighteen. And um, um, now knowing what I think, now knowing that what I know about surrogate healing, uh, this is an incredibly powerful um, way to get healing to people that can't be in a session either because of their age or maybe their infirmities or or just geographically. Um, if one person is has has a very close uh, connection with it, you know it's usually a family member or a very close friend, then um, then they can ask for healing through the client. And what happens is then the client's higher self contacts that person who's the target of the healing, contacts that higher self, seeks permission to do the healing and then can report back and conduct the healing with the client's higher self. And what what Barb and I found is that not only can the healing happen between, so for example, I was facilitating, Barb was a client, we asked for some surrogate healing for people that she was close to, but we, I also asked for surrogate, for surrogate healing for people that I was close to as the facilitator, and we got the surrogate healing. 
so um, it didn't even have to be people close to bar, but it was people close to me as the as the facilitator. So that was interesting, the, the surrogate healing. And in that, uh, the one person that I'm close to uh, is reporting that the low back pain of 22 years is completely gone. Pretty darn phenomenal for QHHT. It's amazing, amazing. Um, and Holly, um, did you want to share what happened with you or not? Oh, the, yeah, sure. Remember sure. So, what so, the uh, higher yeah. self said to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, again, I'm facilitating Barb's a client, and um, I have I shattered my knee uh, four years ago in a skiing accident, and I have two plates, a bolt, and four pins still, the metal in my knee. Well, we don't know still, do we, Barb? <laughs> Not so yet. Um, <laughs> so um, I asked for healing on my knee. I first asked. I said, "Did does the um, does the metal affect the flow of chi in my leg at all?" And Barb's higher self said, "No, no, it doesn't. There's no worries there." And then Barb's higher self said, "I, I said, okay, fine. You know, is there is there you know is there anything I should know about it? Uh, no." And then Barb's higher self said. Would you like the metal removed? I mean, unprompted by me, the higher self said, mm-hmm. would you like the metal removed? I said, sure, why not? Well, it just so happened we were, it was kind of, you know, late in the, in the session here, and I was, I was sitting in a chair by the bed, as we usually are as we're facilitating, and I was, I was slouching, okay? I was, I was just kind of in a, just a real, uh, terrible posture, just slouching in this chair. And, of course, Barb has her eyes closed. She's in trance. Her higher self is speaking, and her higher self says, well, I need you to sit up straight, dear. (laughs) (laughs) So I sat up straight. And, And and, of course, my eyes are are closed, so I have no idea what's going on. So So I sit up straight. Yeah, and then... um, and then uh, Barb, Barb's higher self speaks to her in this mathematical language. It's really, it's really pretty amazing. And so her higher self starts chanting this mathematical language, and uh, and then tells me that that they've installed a program to then remove the um, to remove the metal from my knee. And um, and it, but then they said that I needed to have another session with her to install the next program. And so we did, you know, a few days later we did we did that session and then and then installed the second program. So um so yeah, so interesting stuff about about me being the client and yet getting I mean sorry, being the facilitator and getting healing from the client in trance. Yeah. Um that's that's so fascinating. I have so many questions. You know, Dolores always says, you know, being curious. This this is where, you know, if you're somebody who is sitting out there listening and, and you can just imagine all these other questions to ask, then you are aligning with the energy of Dolores Cannon because that's where that's where she was. So I may I ask a couple questions about your knee, Holly? Is that would that be all right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um sure. so so one main question is, did you just flat ask for the healing but not ask, like, you know, um, why did I have that problem or or why did that happen to me to begin with? Or did you just plain say me I have, you know, I mean, how did that that part of it work? Well, yeah, well, I, I had had sessions at a different time with other practitioners. I had, I've been so blessed in this whole QHHT journey, Candace, with always being near other QHHT practitioners, even here in Durango mm-hmm. I am, and I had had multiple mm-hmm. sessions where I'd had my knee uh, investigated and evaluated, and I had asked questions about the reason, and it's my left knee, by the way. I was going to ask um, that. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> and so I, I, I won't share it, but I do know the purpose. I know the purpose of, of the okay. injury and all that. And so ironically, mm-hmm. in this particular session, 
I was really only worried about the chi. I really was. I wasn't. It mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily giving me pain. I had, I had actually, through QHHT, had all of my knee pain taken away um, and successfully. And I was just really worried about T, and, and that was it. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so it was just hilarious that, that Barb's high stuff goes, well, don't you want the metal taken away? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I actually, um, I remember the first time that I had that happen, and it was very strange. I had um, uh, three out of four clients um, in a row came to me, all women, and they all had metal in their body. And and I don't even know how it was that I asked, but it just, it, sometimes you probably feel this or have this happen to you as practitioners, yourself tell me if this is true or not where suddenly you hear kind of like a question come out of your mouth and you think wow that was a pretty good question where did that come from I don't know about you but I have that I'm like wow that's pretty good and um (laughs) one of them was about the metal I was like well can you you know replace the metal and I thought wow I haven't heard I mean it's like I'm listening myself ask that question and the higher self uh, the subconscious agreed. And then I quickly had, you know, two other clients and, and the same things had happened. And um, one client in particular of me, I'm not sure about the what happened with the others, <clears throat> but I was so astonished by the, the concept that um, the body could replace metal with bone and tissue mm-hmm. that um, I made a call to Arkansas to find out if, if it had happened um, in, in Dolores's sessions because I hadn't heard her talk about it or anything and what it's one of the fav- my, my most favorite memories of of calling up over there um you know this was several years ago of course but um my favorite thing was is, is like we we had the session like on, almost on the exact same day it was just that week too she had had the same thing happen which I just find astonishing how these things kind of group together either in our own practice mm-hmm. or with, you know, others. Isn't that interesting? Well, mm-hmm. it's just like mm-hmm. Salvo, a a grouping that occurs when you have a yard sale. You'll have a whole bunch of people come, and then it's quiet. And another bunch of people, it's like they're batching people to come to your yard sale. That's happened year after year that I've done yard sales. Um, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. If I could share some of the healings that I've uh, yeah. heard from my clients, um, they're just so wonderful. There's one lady that uh, I regressed, and we discovered that she's a she has a parallel life as a reptilian, in a very very loving relationship, and has a family in, in, as a reptilian. And mm-hmm. she shared with me that the shoulder and neck pain that she's had for five years is totally gone. And even a month after the session, it was still gone. Uh, Mm -hmm. Another person said that their author antidepressant medication. Life just keeps getting better and better. Had one woman who had uh, multiple sclerosis. She's off all her medications. People who have uh, been addicted to alcohol, and that's all gone. Smoking, gone. If they they don't want to uh, engage in those behaviors, then and they're ready to release it. It's it's gone. Uh, headaches. Uh, blood pressure is normal at the doctor's office. Um, uh, negative entities around a person. That was a phenomenal healing that was mm-hmm. uh, done. Uh, one person said it was like a magic switch was turned on, and they got up the next morning and they felt the best they ever had in their entire life, and they felt <laughs> they had the strength and tenacity and focus now uh, mm-hmm. to pursue their dreams. Um, another popular one is gastric reflux. They take care of that like it's a sneeze. It's no problem. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, one woman, uh, very important was her career. She has more clients calling her now. Um, and mm-hmm. one, of, one of the most phenomenal sessions I had was a man who snored through his session. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you think, man, uh, um, uh, on the outside, <laughs> you think that this man received any healing at all. Well, when we finished, I said, you had a healing. I just knew it. And sure enough, the next day, 
he told me that he had a the worst headache of his life. This man has um, migraine throughout the day, uh, so bad that he has to get Botox injections around his uh, scalp. Headache completely gone. Uh, mm. And another fascinating thing was the tinnitus, which is uh, known as ringing in the ears, of 18 years, completely gone. And he said that was worth it right there. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I think it's it's, it's important to note too, though, that that sometimes they, the higher self, chooses uh, not to heal for a reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to remember that all of our ailments or physical manifestations in our body are messages, right? It's a way for the higher self to talk to us and, and send us messages. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the... the the uh when they when you know let's say for example i had a i had a client um actually just a few days ago that had um really terrible stomach pain and um you know can you you know so we're in the session and i'm asking the higher self can you you know please take away the stomach pain and and the higher self says no well okay mm-hmm. why well because he needs to quit drinking Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the manifestation of the stomach pain is a message of a different problem. And so even if the even if the remedy doesn't happen there in the in the session, at the very least we can find out why the what the message is and why the, the ailments manifest and then what the client needs to do to correct it. So, yeah. yeah. That's a really that really line. great point. That, mm-hmm. That's a good point, Holly, because I um, facilitated a session for a chiropractor who was born, we found out, with an anomaly in his spine that's seen on x-ray. And people would know that in the medical community as spotulolisthesis. And the higher self said they will help diminish some of the discomfort, but it's there for a purpose to remind him what his patients are going through. Yep. Yep. Um, gosh, you know, just just today, just today, I um, I had a session where <clears throat> a young man, a musician, and part of his problem was he had some pretty good shoulder, back, and neck pain, and we asked where it was from. It was actually it came from his father's side of the family. And, you know, where where did that come from? It came from some negativity and some other things. And then we asked, well, has he learned from it? Can he release it? Can he let it go? And it was very interesting. His higher self said, "Um, not all the way, because he was a musician, is a musician. And he was very, very young, um, just 20, very young man. And... um, he needed to have that experience of what um, human pain was to deepen the message and the effect and um, it, that his music has on other people. It, it made him more complex and more understanding as a human. Isn't that interesting? So he was supposed mm-hmm. to keep some of it. Right. This reminds me a little bit, Candace, of Natalie Sudman's book, and her near death uh-huh. experience, and she um, she's 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 died. She's on the other side. Uh, she <laughs> comes back. She ends up she ends up coming back. But her and her spirit guide are on the other side, knowing now that she's going to come back. That it isn't a death experience. It's a near death experience, and they're laughing hysterically at mm-hmm. all of the possible injuries that they could give her. Oh, if we cut off your right hand, you're going to have to learn how to write with your left hand, and that's going to be absolutely mm-hmm. hilarious. And they're making all of these plans and mm-hmm. setting all these strategies of the injuries that she's going to have for mm-hmm. the purpose as she comes back into body. And they just think it's hysterical, the the injuries that they're going to give her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that book. Uh, there, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people I know who considered it too cerebral. Um, and it's 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 a really thin book, and I'm telling you, you got to read it slow. <laughs> it's 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot mm-hmm. packed into that book, but I think about, talk about, and reference that book all of the time. Um, there's a lot of yeah. wisdom in there. Natalie actually spoke at um, our second practitioner reunion um, a couple of years ago, and, and she's a painter, and she's kind of an amazing woman. Really, really enjoy um, speaking with um, Natalie Sudman. What a what a great thing to um, to mention here in our program. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just so. just for the yeah, just for the listeners, it's S U D M A N. Natalie's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, great book. Yeah. Yeah. It really, really, yeah. really is a good a good book. Uh huh. Can we take any questions from the listeners? Or is that doable? Sure. Tonight? If there's, um, I've been watching the. Um, I've been watching the phone lines. I don't see any there. Um, none of our phone people have their hands up. I've been watching the chat room. Um, it, okay. If there are any questions, it is probably a good time to um, pose them either in the chat room or to give us a call. I'll remind everyone that the number is 646-716-8828. If you'd like to call in and ask a question or put one in the chat room, um, we'd love to take it. We've been talking now for a couple of hours and um, (laughs) might wind it down this evening. Ladies, it's been so much fun to... um, to talk to you. I mean, I think we could just go on for hours. I think that means we might have to come back. <laughs> well, we would love to. so many, so many different, so many different things we can talk to. Well, I don't really see see any questions coming coming in or um, anyone's hands up. How about we just take this time to um, to tell our listeners how they might be able to find you if they're in Arizona or in Colorado and if they'd like to uh, head your way for a session. Barbara, how can um, our listeners find you? Well, I have a website. It's barbarabeckerhealing.com. That's B-A-R-B-A-R-A-B-E-C-K-E-R-H-E-A-L-I-N-G.com. I also have email at barbarabeckerhealing at gmail.com. And also my phone number is on my website. And right. That's Super. the way to do it. Also the uh, practitioners, um, find a practitioner on the website. So. Yeah, yeah. That one of the best websites to go to to find a practitioner in your area are our dedicated practitioner listings, which are photo listings, and, and you can kind of see the area of the country, etc. And that is a direct URL of Dolores Cannon Q H H T dot com. That's Dolores Cannon Q H H T dot com. Um, Holly, how can our listeners find you? Sure. So I'm in Durango, Colorado, and my website is awarecaredurango.com. So A-W-A-R-E-C-A-R-E-D-U-R-A-N-G-O, awarecaredurango.com. And uh, our location in downtown Durango is is uh, shown there on the the uh, website. I practice in the Mountain Medicine Clinic, great little clinic with um, with lots of um, uh, enlightened uh, caregivers. And uh, my email is awarecaredurango at gmail dot com. Super. Well, okay. And um, anyone who might be in the heartland um, in Kansas or passing by and passing through who'd like to. Uh, possibly have a session with me, you can find me at newearthjourney.com. I also have a bi-weekly uh, Tuesday radio show called New Earth Journey, which is on BBS radio. Um, do a little expansive um, um, talking there, changing the subjects, get a little bigger than the, than the quantum healing uh, focus that we have here on this show, Quantum Healing with Candace. Um, I would like, again, to thank in 5D for um, allowing this show to be created and bringing this method to the world. It it really is life-changing for 
for so many. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone who tuned in to listen today. And I like to think to thank those of you who are listening to us in the future, maybe in an archive, because we love the idea of the timelessness of being able to connect with others in the future um, and go through time and space, which is what we do with QHHT. Um, Holly and Barbara, this has truly been such an enjoyable couple of hours. I, I hope you had a good time as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Candace. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so and it's much. always great to talk to you. Thank you so much, ladies. And I truly would love to have you back. And good night, everybody. And thank you for tuning in. Till next time. Okay. Thank you, Candace. Bye bye. Thank now. you. Bye bye.